Hey, this is a quick uh, run through of how to um, use my tool setting utility. Uh, so what you're going to do need to do for configuration um, is uh, in your tool table, um, we're going to be using tools 98 and 99. 98 being your Heimer probe or your 3D taster. And then uh, tool 99 is going to be the uh, spindle nose to table datum. Um, or how you know whatever spot you measure all your tools from uh, so those things are clear in here I've got my uh, program loaded and you notice if you try to run the program before you know you set anything it's gonna error out and tell you that you need to actually set that stuff so so we're gonna run this program it's gonna say this message uh, and let you know that you need to do this setup so we're gonna start with the utility uh, we're going to do a two tool setting and the first tool we're going to measure is 99 um, this one is going to have a uh, for mine it's four inches because that's how uh, tall my um, my little uh, tool probe is uh, so manually load that one uh, we're going to go to locate length Jog, and then I'm going to jog the uh, spindle down um, and kind of align it over the probe here or over the uh, things in the way. Okay. Go down here. I'm just going to uh, measure the spindle. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is basically just giving you a, a reasonable gauge length for your tools. Um, you'll notice that this isn't even really flat. If you turn the spindle, uh, you'll get kind of a different measurement in every spot. But that doesn't really matter. This is close enough. Um, I'm gonna say that's good. I'm gonna say, go ahead and go up. All right. Gonna go this one again. Uh, this time we're gonna do tool 98. That is our Heimer. Uh, so the block height here is going to be zero uh, because we're just going to measure the, the table directly with the probe. Start. That wants me to manually load that. You go ahead and do that. This takes two hands. All right. So we're ready to go ahead and locate the length. Going to jog the machine down to the uh, top of the table and I like to find a relatively clear spot uh, that's not all scratched up to get an accurate measurement here because this one is uh, pretty critical. So I'm gonna get this one right on zero as close as we can and then we're all done. go ahead and pull this tool out and we'll show you how we measure our, our tools and our uh, fixture offsets. All right, so now we've got a tool we want to measure in the spindle. We got our probe set up in the usual spot. Uh, just as like a, you know, a guesstimate as to how long this tool is, it's about seven and, I don't know, seven eighths, three quarters, something like that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is go to our utility. We're gonna do our tool setting. This is really hard to do. One, uh, this one will just be 22. I don't want to actually put it in the carousel. And then 22. One, the block height size being your uh, tool height gauge. So we're gonna load that one's loaded in. Gonna locate the length, and then you can obviously do this faster once you get good at it. Uh, in the right spot and obviously you can do these sequentially and that's fine you can measure all your tools in your carousel this way at once if you want to so I'm gonna go ahead and set that zero all right manual go back and that part's done you know load as many tools and measure as many tools in that as you want uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, spin the probe out and we're going to probe a work offset. All right, 
fixture offset, we're going to use the utility here too. Uh, let's just make this um, fixture 35. Doesn't really matter. Locator diameter zero. Uh, gonna jog it, and I'm just gonna put it in a spot. I don't know the corner of the vise here. It's really kind of wherever you've decided you want to put it. I'm gonna put it right here, uh, just for this demonstration. And I'm gonna just go ahead and set the X, Y, and Z off of this one point here. Um, so there's our zero, and let's say that's the, you know, wherever we wanna put this, uh, the store, and then I'm gonna put all three here, Z, X, Y, and then we're done. I'm gonna jog out of here just to get the tool out of the way. All right, gonna take this out and we'll show you what's going on here. Okay, at this point, you know, I got my machine is set up and ready to run the job. Uh, the first thing I have to do though is uh, run my program. So I've got mine as programs, uh, program one. You can put it as program whatever you want. Um, so we're gonna auto, I'm already, I've already got my program loaded. doors, press start, um, so it runs through all the tools, so it says it converted two tools to positive length, uh, those two tools being the one we just measured, the end mill, and the uh, Heimer probe uh, started out as negative but it is now positive, okay, and then right now it's asking for an offset number, so we uh, put it in for, for the work offset we want to use. Uh, we put as 35, um, reference tool is not of a suitable length, reference length, let's pause it, the gauge line. Uh, okay, maybe it didn't convert that tool. Alright, I was wrong. Uh, you actually have to run the, the thing first to set this variable, so, uh, <laughs> so I ran it once, it went through all the tools, and then it doesn't actually reload the gauge length thing. So I'm gonna actually change the program so it does that after it runs through all the tools. Okay, so now we have a positive uh, measurement for our Heimer gauge length. Um, so if we run the, the thing again, it'll be, it'll be fine. Uh, so we're gonna run it. All right, pick 35. So now it says uh, fixture 35 will be updated from negative seven to negative 15. Uh, and it gives us a measurement above the table um, for where our, uh, our Z offset is gonna be now. Um, so if we look at this, 4.3624, yeah. go ahead and... Yeah, that's about right, so. Got too much stuff in my garage right now. So we're gonna do one. Oops, actually, gotta keep the door closed, otherwise it gets mad. Start. All right, we're gonna do one. Yeah, if there's a way to disable the door, uh, that would be uh, <laughs> very helpful for this program. Um, so there we go. It's fixture 35 adjusted, only do it once. Uh, if you try to do it twice, you may actually just get uh, an error message. So in this case, if we adjusted it down another eight, uh, eight inches or whatever the Heimer length is, again, uh, it puts it below the table and, and gives us this error message just to warn us that, you know, that happened. If your fixture happens to be more than the Heimer length above the table, uh, then you'll be able to do it twice or three times or however much Z you have and however high the, the fixture offset started. Um, but for the most part, this catches uh, any idiocy that happens. Uh, the only thing that really happens if you um, get your, if you forget to do this, uh, is your tool will be cutting uh, air however long the Heimer is above whatever your, uh, you know, whatever you think you put the uh, the workpiece as. So if you forget to run this, then your tool just ends up, you know seven or eight inches higher than it's supposed to be and you'll just go back and fix it uh, by running this and picking your offset again. So um, every time 
you run this, uh, it checks your tool lengths and adjusts them to be positive. Uh, you know, this gauge length here. And then every time you run a, a program from Fusion generated from my post processor, uh, it also checks the tool links for all the tools that are being called by that program, uh, just as like a redundancy. Um, let's say between runs you break an end mill and you have to put a new one in and remeasure it. Well, you can just rerun the program again and before the program even starts, uh, it'll check your, your end mill length, you know, your tool length again, make sure it's uh, still positive. So that's kind of the key to this. It just has to run through and, and check uh, each time you run that utility or you run your program that the end mills, you know, all your tools are all positive, positive gauge links. Um, so at this point we can double check this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do, oh, it's, uh, All right, so uh, I just lost power here. I just had to recall start the machine. Um, so I got it in G90 now. We're gonna run this line. Uh, gonna go ahead and go. Just put a different uh, X and Y value just to make it uh, a little easier to put the probe on here. Um, just gonna make sure this is clean on the bottom. And there we go. So if you find that this measurement is off, uh, then you may need to make an adjustment um, on your uh, your tool probe length. Um, the spindle nose to table uh, doesn't really adjust um, the you know, from here to here, um, that's the probe uh, length. So uh, you may need to take a few tenths here and there off of it to get these to jive, uh, just to make sure that, you know, you didn't get measure a bump on the table or something like that when you set it. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll see that this does repeat. Um, so now, you know, if you go and measure a fixture offset, you just run the, uh, run the tool uh, the utility that I made, um, set the fixture offset the same way that you would normally do it with the utility, measuring the Z with the, uh, the Heimer, and then run my utility, and then once it's done, uh, all of your tool lengths and everything should be positive, uh, and your fixture offset should essentially just be uh, if your spindle nose here was touching whatever you were trying to indicate. So um, so that's basically how this works. Uh, if, if you think about it, like your spindle nose being like tool zero, essentially, like zero length. Um, if you were to jog this down and, you know, measure the, the whatever you were setting as your work offset, zero, uh, and then add to that the length of the tool, which is a positive number now. In this case, this one is what? we can see here uh, uh, tool 22 is 7.82 so I said it was like seven and three quarter seven and seven eighths it's right there um, so yeah the other nice thing about this is these positive numbers you can you know either get them from uh, if you have a, a tool setter uh, external or something they'll give you this um, you can calibrate your uh, calibrate these links that you're getting um, uh, by adjusting that spindle nose to taper because the gauge length isn't technically uh, the spindle nose um, but yeah you can you can fiddle with that all you want but the nice thing is these are fairly portable between machines uh, so if you take this tool out and it's 7.8217 uh, you can put it in another machine and it's probably going to be the same thing um, depending on how you've got these adjusted. Uh, so even if the, you know, your column is eight inches longer on one machine than the other and those tool lengths, uh, you know, would be wildly different between the two machines. Well, in this case, you could feasibly like just 
copy the tool tables over and they should just work on both machines. So, um, so yeah, that's how it works. It's fairly simple. Uh, you know, once you get the initial setup done, all you have to do is just run this one program, uh, put in whatever offset you want to adjust, and then you're done. Then you can run whatever you want to do. So that's how it works. Uh, let me know if you have any issues with it. Okay, and this is the code that the post processor generates. Uh, so all it does is here is it looks at this list of tools um, and then essentially says if the tools are less than an inch long, basically if they're negative, uh, an inch is kind of an impossible gauge length for these things, uh, you know, a tool sticking out of the spindle from the, the spindle nose, um, then it adjusts it by the, uh, uh, the tool 99, the spindle nose, the taper. Um, so it just goes through the list and makes all the negative tools positive again. Uh, and then just runs to the program. So every time your uh, uh, program runs, even if you have um, remeasured a tool with a tool setting utility, uh, between runs, all you have to do is just run the, uh, you know, run your program and it'll just automatically fix all those. So you don't actually have to run my utility to adjust the tool lengths to be positive. So uh, it'll do that with the post processor and I can show you how that works. All right, so I've adjusted the post like this. Uh, so in the right tools section, uh, I've changed it to right tool list and check negative links. So if we uh, search for this. All right, so scroll down here. So it's going to get the tool table. And then this is a section that I added. Um, so I'm going to go through our list of tools. Uh, Gonna get the tool, and then this is the um, you know if statement uh, to adjust it, and then we're gonna write it. That's all it is. So uh, I'm gonna put this code up, uh, and uh, either you can use my post processor or you can just like copy this into yours. But this is basically all you have to do um, to get this uh, to check every time. So that's it.